Hi, second grade. You guys have been doing such a wonderful job on your landscapes. Please make sure that you have your landscape so we can do today's assignment. If you don't have it, go back to your classroom page and up, find where you uploaded it and you can print it out again and do today's assignment on top or you can redo last month's assignment. But you will need it in order to move on. So let's get started. So today we're going to review the element of space and then we're going to talk a lot about the element of shape. But let's just review space really quickly. One of the most important parts about space is if you're trying to show it on a flat paper and make the flat paper look like it has deep 3D space, you want to change the size of some objects. Things that are close are going to appear really, really big, and things that are far away are going to appear very, very small. So let's take a look at that. Here I have a canvas, and it's big. It's bigger than my head. It's really close. If I pull it closer, it looks bigger. If I move it further away, it looks smaller. And if it's all the way back there, it looks really small. And I can get bigger and smaller as well. This is just an illusion. That canvas didn't shrink. It's the same size as it was. It just looks smaller because it's farther away. Another way that we show space in our artwork is we make things look like they're higher. So that canvas looks like it's higher than I am, but it's really not. It's at the same height as my arm. I'm not putting my arm way up. It looks like it's higher, but it's really not. Again, it's just an illusion. So we're going to look, about, look at that a little bit in some artwork, and we're going to see how that works in our art. Before we move on, I just want to mention two new groups of shapes. Shapes are two-dimensional or flat. And in order to make a shape, we need to take a line and we need to make it go around somehow and close on itself. So this would be a shape, that would not. And we're going to talk about that as well. Before we move on, I just want to talk about organic shapes and geometric shapes. And we talked about these a little bit in first grade. But organic shapes are shapes that we find in nature. So if you remember, what I used to always say, in the sky, under the water, or in the woods. So those are shapes that we would find in nature. Leaves, clouds, seaweed, shells, rocks, the sun. And then geometric shapes are the ones that we talked about a lot in kindergarten. Those are our basic shapes, or shapes that we would learn about in math. Squares, triangles, circles, octagons, pentagons, etc. So go find your artwork from last month, get your supplies together, and let's get started. For this project, we're going to review the element of space, and we're going to really focus today on the element of shape. So space, we know, refers to the distance or area between, around, above, below, or within things. We know it can be 2D or 3D, and last week we talked about how we can create space by using the size of objects, where they are placed on the paper, we can use positive and negative space, and we can overlap images to create the illusion of space. In this picture, we see that the size of the object in the, the bottom of the paper, which we know is called the foreground, are much larger than the objects that are in the background or the middle ground. So the farther away they are, the smaller they appear, and the closer they are to us, the bigger they appear. If they're really far away, they're very, very tiny. In addition, this mountain is overlapping this mountain. So we can tell that it's partially blocking the blue mountain and we can clearly see that one is in front of and one is behind the other mountain in space. Finally, when things are looking like they're going back in space, such as this road, they appear to be placed higher on the paper or they appear to go higher up on the paper. So there is not a hill in this part of the picture. It's a flat road, but it appears to be going higher on the paper in order to create the illusion of space. How do you think space enhances art? Would this picture be better or worse if it was flat? Or is it more interesting or less interesting now that the artist has created deep space? Space, as we, re we learned last week, is divided into three areas. So we have our foreground, which is at the bottom, down here. And in the foreground, things at the bottom of the paper 
are large, close, and they're very clear and dark. Then right here we have our middle ground. In the middle ground, which is the middle of the paper, things are medium in size and medium in value. So these houses are medium size. The grass here is much smaller than the foreground grass. And then we have the background. Things are so small back here that we can't even see the grass. So it's very small here, a little bit bigger here, much bigger here. The background is at the top of the land, not the top of the paper because in this picture that's where the sky is. Things are tiny, they're far away, faded, and a light value. We can also show space by overlapping. So we can see that some of these objects are in front of others and they're partially blocking the object behind or the object behind is partially blocked by the objects that are over it. So for shape, which is what we're going to focus on today, shape is an element of art that's a two-dimensional enclosed space. So space, what we were just talking about, can be 2D, but we were really focusing on creating that 3D space. But now we want to talk about a two-dimensional shape, a two-dimensional enclosed space. So because these lines start here and go around and end at the beginning, the space inside is two-dimensional, is, is enclosed, excuse me, and this is a flat two-dimensional space. Shapes can belong to two groups. We can have organic shapes and we can have geometric shapes. And these are things that we learned about in first grade, so hopefully this is a review. Organic shapes are found in nature. There's so many organic shapes that we can find outside, but the, there's three basic places that I like to think about, and that's in the sky, which are moon, stars, clouds, raindrops, etc. We can also find organic shapes under the water, so that would be sea creatures, shells, seaweed, coral, etc. And the last place that I usually tell kids we can find organic shapes is in the woods, leaves, animals, rocks, puddles. So organic shapes, those are our natural shapes, and we can find them in the sky, under the water, or in the woods. And then we have our geometric shapes. Those are our basic shapes. Think back to kindergarten. What shapes did I teach you about then? Those are probably the geometric shapes. We learn about those shapes in math, and they include squares, circles, triangles, diamonds, rectangles, ovals, octagons, hexagons, pentagons, semicircles, etc. Do you think shapes can be considered art? Are the shapes on these paper on, in these two groups art yet, or do we need to do something with them first? These are two paintings by artist Paul Clay. So on the left side we see the red bridge, and on the right side we see a beautiful portrait. Simple shapes can be combined to make complex designs. So this little city with the bridge and the landscape was made by combining simple shapes. And then if we look at the portrait, that was combined again by combining simple shapes. Why is it easier to, be, to use simple shapes when drawing something complex? So for this lesson, you will need your landscape drawing from last month. It has your overlapping mountains, foreground, middle ground, and background. And it has your sky with warmer, cool colors that are blended to show visual inches. Remember, the warm colors are red, orange, and yellow. And the cool colors are blue, green, and purple. And if you want to add pink into the warm colors and turquoise into the cool colors, that will work as well. So... If you chose cool colors, you could repeat them in the bottom, or you could use warm colors in the bottom, which is what I'm going to do. If you chose warm colors last month, you could do cool colors in the bottom, or you could choose warm colors in the bottom. So you are the artist, you can choose what group of colors that you would like to use. But again, choose your coloring material based on what you have available. I'm going to use either crayons or chalks, but colored pencils will work great. Markers most likely will not. Oil pastels will be good. Um, and 
then we are also going to make objects in our foreground, our middle ground, and our background. So large objects, medium objects, and teeny tiny objects. So for the objects, your options, you could always draw something, but I want to have a little variety in my project, so I'm going to choose to make something out of paper. So you can choose colored papers, you could choose newspaper, and if you are choosing papers, and you can also take white paper and color it as well, you may need scissors, and if you have it available, uh, um, white glue or a glue stick. If you do not have it available, then you can just simply place your items in your picture, and I will show you how to do that. And um, you can just place your items and then take a picture of it, and Mrs. TH will most likely not even be able to tell. If you do not have your background paper, you have two options. One, um, you can redo it. Or two, go back into that last month's assignment on your Google Classroom, print a copy of what you submitted, and just do the next step over the printed version of it. In a photo that you submit to Google Classroom, again, I most likely will not be able to tell. And unfortunately, the way this year is going, it's looking more and more like all of our artwork will just be digitally displayed at the end anyway. So print out what you did last month if you can't find the original, and then do the next step right over. Okay, so I'm gonna color these mountains, and if you remember, the, the different, um, the different facts about the foreground, the middle ground, and the background, if you really want to make this challenging, in the foreground, things are a dark value. So they're a close, large, low on the paper, but they're also a dark value. In the background, which is up here by the, middle, by the horizon line, things are a light value. They're far, very small, under the horizon line or vanishing point, which is right here, but they're very, very light. And in the middle ground, you guessed it, they're a medium value. They're medium distance in size, middle of the picture, and they're medium value. So I'm going to color the, this hill very dark, this one medium, and these two very light. So when you're doing yours, you can choose how you um, want to color yours in. You can use your finger or you can use a tissue to smooth it all out. You do not need to use a lot of chalk. So here I have my dark pink mountain and then I have my light yellow mountain in the background. I need to find a medium tone for the middle ground, but unfortunately I can't find a chalk that's not as dark as this or as light as this. So I'm not sure what to do. But then I thought about it and I thought, well, what if I blend the two colors and I color real light with my pink and then I add some light yellow on top. Let's just see what will happen. And of course, sometimes it's a better idea to experiment on a separate piece of paper, not on your actual art project. but. I think it's going to work out here. Okay, so I have my dark, my medium, and my light. Okay, so when you finish that, the next thing what we want to do is we want to show an understanding of those organic shapes from nature, and we want to show an understanding of the geometric shapes that are we learned about in math. And when we do that, we want to take some of our either our drawing materials and draw them, or what I thought would be fun was to take some collage materials, some papers, and cut them out. So here I have cut a big building out of newspaper. I've cut a medium building out of newspaper, and I cut two small buildings out of newspaper. Okay, they should not all go next to each other. So if we remember, our background is up here, things are very, very small. Our foreground is down here, things are very, very big. And our middle ground is right here, and things are very, 
um, are medium in size and medium um, and in the middle of the ground. So I'm going to take my biggest and darkest building and I'm going to put it at the bottom. I'm going to take my medium size and medium color building and I'm going to place it somewhere on this hill. And then I kind of like where these two guys are. And maybe I'll add one more teeny tiny building right here. Okay. So this way it looks like my buildings are getting smaller and farther away. Not only do I want to see an understanding of geometric shapes, so we're using rec I just used rectangles and squares here and I combined them. And you don't have to use newspaper if you don't want to. If you want to, you could just take white paper and color it. You could color um you could color you could cut colored paper. Um so maybe I will color this pretty dark and place it in the where do i put the large dark one in the foreground hopefully everyone just said that and then the medium one medium size and medium color that will go down here i'm going to use a lighter one a lighter color here and i'll color this one medium size you know what? That's not. That's not. I don't have another light one. So again, I might think about blending two colors together. So this is definitely lighter than my big one, but not so light. Okay, so I can put that somewhere in my middle ground, and then I'm going to take this tiny one. It. I'm going to put this one right here in my background. So I have foreground buildings, middle ground, and background. So not only do I want to see those geometric shapes, but I would really like to see your organic shapes. In fact, I'm requiring it. So I'm going to put a really dark tree that's really big at the bottom. So in order to make this, I cut some curvy lines. I combined them. I cut out some branches. Trying to make it look like a tree. So this is going to be my darkest one. I'll pull out my markers or my crayons and I can add some nice sticks and twigs to that to make it really stand out and look like it has a lot of details. Okay, maybe I want to add some antennas to these guys or some details to this one with my marker so you can do anything that you want this is your artwork as long as you're following the rubric for how I'm going to grade you over here I'm going to do a little bit of a smaller tree and oh, look at that it's a lighter value because it's in the middle ground okay so all I'm doing is just kind of placing it it's overlapping some of my background buildings that's completely fine again you can take a marker or a crayon colored pencil add sticks and twigs or details in my background on my horizon line, I'm going to do teeny tiny ones, and I will, if I can find the color, I will take a crayon, and I will finish this off with my crayon. Obviously, this would be better if I had glued it, which I just did not do. Um, if you don't have glue, that's okay. I'd like some of these to be a little bit thicker. You do not have to do coloring and colored paper and newspaper all together. I'm just trying to show you your options, but you do have to include geometric shapes and organic shapes, and you need to show me something in the foreground, large on the bottom, something in the background, tiny, right underneath the horizon line, and something in the middle ground, right in the middle. If you choose to, you can make it more interesting by varying the value. 
If that's too much, you can keep it all the same value. You can keep it all medium, dark, light, whatever you choose. But when I'm looking for your work and grading it, I will be looking for organic and geometric shapes in three grounds, various, things, various sizes, and placements. So here's one more um, way of doing this. I'm going to take my crayons and color my background mountains with a light value. Try color slower than this is TH. I have not mastered the fast forward or the fast replay um, feature in filming. And I don't want to waste anyone's time with watching me color. Now, like earlier, I don't have like a super dark green. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to combine in my foreground. In the last picture, I combined light green and dark green or regular green in the middle ground. But for this one, I'm going to do just regular green in the middle ground. And I'm going to combine blue and green in the foreground. I do think it's worth noting that even though I am coloring fast, you will be given a grade on your coloring, your cutting, your gluing, your drawing, and your color blending. And that grade is called craftsmanship. So it is the care that you take in creating your craft, which is your beautiful draw, your beautiful picture and your art. And that is important, that we are building our motor skills and we are working slowly and carefully. And I am not modeling that at this moment. And for that, I apologize. Okay, so I have colored my foreground, middle ground, and background. And I have to say, as a picture, I kind of think that this looks neat as it is, but Let's just get crazy and make it look even more interesting. So I'm going to go into my crayon and I'm going to find a color that I'm sure will show up. And I'm going to pick black. You can pick any color that you choose. You are the artist. And this does not have to be super realistic in the colors. The realism that we're trying to create here is with um, our space. So. I know that Mrs. TH is grading me because I looked at the rubric. Not only is she grading me on craftsmanship, my careful lines and coloring, she's craft she's um she's grading me on my simple shapes. So she's gonna be looking to see that I can use rectangles and squares and other geometric shapes to design complex things like buildings. Okay. And she's grading me on whether or not I can use organic shapes to draw complex things like trees. So that being said, we have our geometric shapes, foreground large, middle ground medium, background small. So foreground again at the bottom of the paper, middle ground in the middle, and background higher. If you want to challenge yourself further, you can change the value, dark, medium, and light, or leave that part out. In addition to the geometric shapes, we have organic shapes. You can add leaves to these trees if you want to. We have large, medium in the middle ground, small in the background. Background is on or under the horizon line. If it was up here above the horizon line, it would be a flying tree. So let's just take a quick look at our rubric. Do I have simple shapes to make complex trees and buildings that are combined? Yes, I do. Do I have organic and geometric shapes? So shapes from nature and shapes that we learn about in math, regular shapes? Yes, I do. Space, is there a clear foreground? middle ground and background? Yes, there it is. And is my craftsmanship 
good? Did I work neatly and carefully? If I cut out shapes, did I cut them out carefully and glue them carefully or arrange them and pretend to glue them carefully? Is everything done carefully and neatly? Then take a picture of your work and submit it. We are finished with this project, so please submit it and I will give you a grade and we will be moving on next month. Be creative. I cannot wait to see all of your different and creative ideas. Remember, you are the artist.